My name's Orion Carr. Um, I was born in April 8th, 1990. Um, I was born in Invercargill in the South Island of New Zealand. My father's from the Cook Islands. My mother's from New Zealand. Uh, she's part Cook Island as well. And basically, pretty much, you know, I grew up knowing that there was a God. You know, especially in New Zealand. In New Zealand, we have, you know, there's, 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 you know, there's, there's a lot of the Pacific Island, the, the Maori community. You know, people have a firm belief, whether it's through culture, whether it's through, um, whether it's through, um, you know, uh, tradition. People believe um, there are, that there is a God. But there came a time where my dad. Um, as a lot of people do in New Zealand, you know, people love their sport, people love their rugby. And there came a time where, when my family was going through some certain things. My, uh, my parents were going through some certain uh, dilemmas, I guess you could say. And there came a time where my parents decided, you know, that um, they wanted to try something else. And so my father, um, you know, my dad, he took us boys off to play rugby. And I started playing sports. And you know, as you know, being on the Sabbath, I could no longer attend church. And so I was pretty much there. Started doing my thing. Started, you know, experimenting, seeing what the sport thing's about. And you know, I started to get the hang of it as most of us do. And so here I was going through, you know, coming up as a child, knowing about Christ, but not really knowing Christ on a personal level. And again, as you know, the more I played my sport, the, the further I went away from Christ, the further I went away. At the age of 17, my family was almost at its edges. My family was almost at its edges. And so we're here, we are in Australia, Melbourne. And I moved to Australia. And we're here doing our thing, you know. Again, you know, <clears throat> my dad moves here. And we're living in the country, or we're living in, in the city, which city area. And so I, again, I started my league thing. I started my league sport. I started my league thing, and I'm playing league again. But again, you know, as time goes on, my mind is going further into sin. As time goes on, I may not be murdering, I may, might not be robbing banks, but as time goes on, my, my, my mind is, is going deeper into sin. And although I'm at that point where, you know, I, I may not love Jesus, but People along my journey had planted seeds and allowed me to, to at least some, have some hope. Because to be honest, I remember telling myself, I remember saying to myself, look, I'm not going back to church. I was down in, in Melbourne. And I said, look, why would I go to church? I've got sport. You know, I'm playing rugby, I'm playing league. I could be anywhere. I could be doing my thing. Why in the world am I gonna go back to, to, to God? God, okay, okay, cool. And I said, look, I'm not going back to church. I said to myself, man, why? And so this is why Jesus, this is why Jesus allows us to go through things. Because it wasn't until I started to realize, look, even though I played league and I made it, I was at the point where I make it or break it, look, choose whom you will serve. Jesus said to me, look, you want the world, take it. But look, you can't have me at the same time. And so I was here and I literally, I, I bawled my eyes out for days because I spent hours upon hours, days, weeks, training, going to training, eating right, drinking right, you know, doing the right things, getting enough rest. I was doing all that I could to make it or break it and I still didn't make it. I've not known Jesus for that long. I've known about Jesus. I've known where to find teachings about Him. I've known how to look His name up on the internet. But I've never really known, I never really knew him until not so long ago. And so for our brothers out there, struggling with temptation, struggling out there knowing that look, I can't do it. We're letting someone know that there's hope for the sinner. There's hope for the sinner because unless you give your heart to Jesus, 
unless you have someone who knows what a righteousness is about, someone who knows what it is to live life without sin. Do you know a Savior? Do I know a Savior that lived above sin? But Jesus, I don't know no Savior like this. If you guys want to overcome, there's only one way. There's only one way you and I, anyone can overcome, and that's through Jesus. The blood of Jesus shed for a sinner so the sinner can stand before God, righteous is what's going to save men. And Jesus can do that, only Jesus. Only Jesus Christ is the answer to all our problems. That I'm not ashamed because I'm in the army now. I'm fighting a warfare and you are in the same warfare. You're in the warfare with us. We're on the same, ba we're on the same battlefield. We're on the same war zone. We're on the same path to heaven or, or, or destruction. And you've got to make the decision, choose whom you will serve. I've got to make the decision, choose whom I will serve. And so it's our prayer today that, it, that you might choose, that you might choose Jesus. It's my prayer today that, that, that as, we, as the cameras go off, the lights go out, the mics turn off, that whatever you choose today, choose Jesus because only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves.